organic, unpredictable, unknown, lovely, beautiful, a sense of fulfillment. This is part of the pleasures of life and not the chores of life. Just ahead on Daily Island TV. Getting a degree in three years? Is it possible? Find out next. And speaking, but without words, see how UI students are raising awareness. And in sports, an interview with Pittsburgh's second half game changer, CJ Beathard. All that and more is coming your way. Daily Island TV starts now. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Hannah Hawks. And I'm Kimmy Chax. If you walked around Hubbard Park today, you might have noticed a few guys digging. Back again this year are the archaeologists set on finding more artifacts left behind from early civilizations. They started with soil sampling until they stumbled upon something unusual. Sure enough, the first uh, subsurface test we did today, we, we came up with a 1907 token. Around the turn of the century, there was a lot of tokens that were used for a lot of different things. This one has a clasp on it, so I, it, to me, um, my first inkling would think it would be some type of uh, award or something worn around the neck, maybe on a ribbon. Soil sampling will continue for the next three weeks. Excavations will begin after that, running until Thanksgiving. An Iowa man is facing burglary charges for attacking and robbing University of Iowa student in her dorm room. The attack occurred in the early morning hours at Mayflower Hall on September 16th. The 19-year-old knocked on the student's door and allegedly spit in her face and stole her laptop. Records indicate he is not a university student. He faces second-degree felony charges and will go to court again on September 29th. An Iowa City man is charged with locking his girlfriend's five children in a bedroom for more than 24 hours without food or a bathroom. 28-year-old Joshua Steinbrown locked the children in his girlfriend's apartment. Officers saw the children crying and screaming through a window of the apartment. One girl injured her leg trying to escape. Steinbraun left jail on Saturday with five counts of false imprisonment and child endangerment. Smith said she will continue to discipline her children as she sees fit. UI students will soon be able to graduate with a degree in three years' time. At the last Board of Regents meeting, UI President Sally Mason proposed implementing a plan for a three-year bachelor degree. Mason stated that the plan will be in action by the end of the academic year. It will be a flexible, affordable option designed to meet the needs of well-prepared and motivated students. But are students really prepared? UI senior Yaslin Ruiz shares her viewpoint of the three-year plan. With you being a senior, I was wondering, would you decide to graduate in three years if you had the opportunity, or would you not, and why? Um, I would if I had the opportunity, if I knew what I wanted to do. But I've changed my major a couple times, so three years wouldn't really be ideal for me to graduate. It also wouldn't be ideal for me to get ready to get into the job force. As a senior, I'm kind of not even ready to get into the job force, so I think three years is way too premature. With the plan, students will still be able to get the same high quality degree, but with the benefit of not paying too much on tuition. This winter, we may see more snow plows on the streets of Iowa City. Transportation official, officials say they plan to hire 600 snowplow operators in the state of Iowa for the 2014-2015 winter months. That is almost double compared to last year's when over 300 workers were hired. The company hired additional workers to prepare for this winter. Many drivers worked overtime in last winter's severe weather. The plowers will be employed from October 15th till April 15th. And still to come, wondering why people look so nice on campus today? Find out next. And coming up in sports, after an impressive outing by quarterback C.J. Beathard, many are questioning who should be starting. Hear what Kirk Ferentz has to say coming up. After all the talk about snowplows earlier, I don't know if I'm quite ready for winter. Yeah, I don't know. Last winter was pretty bad. I hope this fall weather continues for a while. Let's check in with Daily Iowa TV reporter Brianna, who is standing by in the weather studio. Bri, will this weather continue? Thanks, guys. And yes, fall is here to stay. To start off your hump day tomorrow morning, we will experience a high of 58 degrees with partly cloudy skies. During the afternoon, you can expect mostly cloudy skies with a high of 72 degrees. So be sure to bring your jacket. Tomorrow evening will be a beautiful night with some partly cloudy skies. But students, 
Don't let the clouds get you down. On Thursday, temps will be in the upper 70s with clear skies during the day, followed by some partly cloudy skies throughout the evening. For the remainder of your week, you can expect the same thing, clear skies with temps in the upper 70s and low 80s. And Hawkeyes, big game ahead of us this weekend. Although our Hawkeyes will be at away at Purdue, to Saturday will be a beautiful day for some football. Temps shall remain the same in upper 70s, clear skies to keep up with. So to keep up with your seven day forecast, stay tuned for Daily Island TV. Back to you guys at the desk. According to a poll conducted by After College, a website that connects job-seeking college students with employers, only 17% of graduates had secured employment after graduation this past year. In today's Street Chatter, we went out to find how UI students are changing the statistics by getting a jump on the start on their future careers. Students and employers flooded into the Iowa Memorial Union Tuesday afternoon in hopes of finding that perfect career fit. Do you have an opportunity for students to come between class, after class, before class to meet with over 160 employers, both from nonprofit and for-profit um, areas. The job fair included companies from 80 different cities around the United States. Among the 160 plus different businesses to attend, there were 25 Fortune 500 companies, along with 30 nonprofits. We came today because um, the University of Iowa is a top-notch college and we honestly couldn't miss it today. After speaking with excited recruiters, we went to discover what students thought they could get from the event. I'm just looking for a good career opportunity and internship to you know, catapult me into finding a job in two years. Well, uh, I'm graduating in May and uh, I'm kind of out there looking for a job. I kind of figure out what I want to do and talking to all these companies kind of gives me a better idea of what I want to do after college and kind of where I want to be and uh, position myself to get a job after school. So. You know, it can never hurt to get dressed up, you know, feel the, the vibe that business brings and, you know, try to find an opportunity. Students who are unable to make it today will have another opportunity to attend in the spring. Nick Fisher, Daily Iowan TV. There has not been a confirmed date for this spring career fair, but according to last year, you can look forward to that happening in late February. Iowa veterans will receive special treatment today as they head to Washington, D.C. today for an honor flight. The Honor Flight is a nonprofit organization committed to honoring veterans for their service. The flight takes veterans serving in all wars to Washington, D.C. Over 85 Iowa veterans took part in the Honor Flight. The vets were greeted by an active soldier in full uniform while visiting the Vietnam Memorial. Russ Dunn, president of the Iowa Honor Flight, has gone on 13 Honor Flights and said the one from today was spectacular. The vets were given a police escort upon arriving in D.C. Honor flights will be proceeding all this week, Ohio tomorrow, Missouri Thursday, and with Colorado and Texas on Friday. A celebration of communicating, but without speaking words. This week is Deaf Awareness Week, and this year's theme, Strengthening Human Diversity. Daily I1 TV Santa Sigworth went out to see how UI students are getting involved. During the lunch hour every Monday in the busy old Capitol Mall, a group of students meet to have lunch in complete silence. The students are members of the American Sign Language program here at Iowa and meet every week to converse only through sign language. This week is Deaf Awareness Week and the ASL program is hosting several events for the occasion. And the idea of Deaf Awareness Week is that we are making sort of the larger hearing community aware that deaf people are amongst us, they are members of our community. We are celebrating the use of American Sign Language. Apart from their weekly conversations, the ASL program is hosting discussions with deaf people in the community. Some of our events are absolutely designed for hearing people who don't know sign language to come and to hear stories from deaf and hard of hearing people talking about their experiences with language. Kevin Extalevich is one deaf student who is participating in those discussions and he feels the University of Iowa's ASL program offers opportunities to deaf students. They offer ASL classes here. Um, growing up, I like I knew deaf people sign, but I had I had no idea that it was an option for me. Uh, I want to become a hearing itinerant so that I can help um, other kids that were in my position before when I was younger. Deaf Awareness Week will finish Friday night with a panel of deaf individuals from the community. This is Tanner Sigworth reporting for Daily Iowan TV. Friday's discussion panel will take place at 7 p.m. in Biology Building East. Other events include trivia night, sports night, and story time. 
It's been a heart-wrenching start to the football season for Hawkeye fans with all four, all four games this season being decided by only one possession. With such close game, fans are getting are really starting to show off their school pride. But one fan decided to take their Hawkeye spirit to a permanent level. Whitney Blakemore and Danny Payne are standing by in the sports studio to tell us more. Guys? That's right, Hannah. We have a picture of one Hawkeye fan you don't want to miss coming up. But first, we caught up with head coach Kirk Ferentz today as his squad prepares for Purdue this weekend. Now, Whitney, the big topic of the day, without much surprise, was the quarterbacks. Yeah, Danny, right away everyone wanted to know the status of Jake Rudock after he left the game at half. Rudock had some issues with his knee last season, but Ferentz says this is unrelated and is now a matter of soft tissue in his lower body. Yeah, yeah, we'll play it day by day. We'll just see what it looks like, you know. I don't expect he'll be with the trainers today, so we'll just see how he moves around, how he feels, and kind of go from there. The good news is he feels better this morning than he did yesterday, and uh, getting getting the uh, test results back was, was a real positive. Backup quarterback C.J. Beathard entered the pick game after half to lead the team to three straight scoring drives. On top of that, he also totaled 98 passing yards, making it his new career high. While Beathard proved to the fans he has what it takes to be the starting quarterback, Ferentz wasn't startled by the performance. Uh, yeah, CJ's a really good quarterback, and yeah, I don't think I'd be surprised by anything he did or, or Jake. I think both of them are capable, playing really well, and uh, you know, I thought Jake played a good first half. Yeah. The Hawkeye coaching staff feels that it is in a great position having two strong and talented quarterbacks they can call on at any time, but the dynamic of having two quarterbacks isn't always easy. Uh, they're great teammates with each other, and that's that's certainly something you would expect or hope for. It's not doesn't always work that way, especially at quarterback position. It can be a you can have some interesting chemistry sometimes with uh, uh, with the group and all that kind of stuff. But we we've been pretty lucky. We've had a you know pretty good run of uh, guys that are really thinking the right. Our daily Iowa TV football reporter Chelsea Brown caught up with a second half hero earlier today. Chelsea. Thanks guys, Chelsea Brown standing alongside quarterback C.J. Beathard. Now C.J. talking a little bit about Pitt, you completed seven of your eight passes and came in for the full second half for Jake Rudolph, but you really finally set the rhythm for the offense during that game. What was going through your mind when you came on the field that needed exactly to happen to get your team back on track? Um, you know, I wouldn't say it was me. Uh, you know, it was just kind of the demeanor in the locker room. We, uh, we, the guys, I just feel like the guys in the locker room, we just knew the whole time that, you know, we had that, that feeling in us we're not going to lose this game and we can't lose another game right after losing to Iowa State like that. But we just, we had a feeling, you know, we got 30 minutes of, of football left to play and we just kind of stepped it up. The guys wanted it more and uh, we went out there and showed that, so. But you definitely changed the momentum of the game, um, especially with your 62-yard bomb to Damon Powell. And how is, did something like that pass kind of maintain not only yours, but the team's kind of motivation to keep battling? Um, you know, I think any any big play can you know you know spark spark an offense. It was a great catch by by Damon, and then uh, the offensive line gave me great protection. You know, just it was something we needed at the time to you know kind of spark spark the the tone of the game, and you know it got us going. And it was it was definitely a big play at the time for sure. And obviously, different playing from both you and Jake. Um, we've seen on the field and everything, but what kind of difference do you see between the two of you guys? Um, you know, I, I, I don't really uh, I don't really look into that too much, but you know, me me and Jake are, you know, we're good friends and stuff. Uh, but you know, obviously we have different personalities and, uh, but we're, we're cool with each other. And, um, but you know, being a quarterback in, in this, this offense, you, you really have to know your stuff. Uh, a lot of, a lot of stuff, the quarterbacks have to check uh, at the line of scrimmage and you just gotta, you gotta know your stuff going in the game and, uh, you know, just prepare each week, so. All right, well, thank you once again, CJ, and back to you guys in the studio. And finally, before we let you go, one Hawkeye found, found a new way of showing his love for the Hawkeyes and Kirk Ferentz. ESPN's Chris Hassel found a picture of this man's tattoo a few days ago. The piece on the man's leg features Ferentz with a stern game day face and his signature. People are really enthused about our football team, and we really appreciate that. So I'm not sure I'd recommend that going to that extreme. But yeah, I did hear about that one, actually, I guess. Yeah. Now, Whitney, even some of the players got a kick out of this one. That's pretty wild. That's, uh, that's dedication. Um, I, don't, I don't know if I would uh, if I'd get that same thing done, but, uh, you know, good for him. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for tonight. But be sure to check us out tomorrow to see what it takes to be the voice of the Hawkeyes as we sat down with Gary Dolphin. Kimmy, Hannah, back to you at the desk. Thanks guys, that's all we have for you tonight. Catch up with us tomorrow night or at the same time or anytime online at dailyiowan.com. I'm Hannah Hawks. 
and I'm Kimmy Checks. Thanks for watching and have a great night.